I'm Intruder Green. You might know me from things like Bottom of the Hill, Flambeau Correctional Facility, and Sprout Social. Uh, welcome to the Intruder Green Podcast. It is the uh, 23rd of July, 2020, and uh, I gotta say, things ain't gotten no better since the last uh, podcast. Uh, shit's getting real fucked up. Now, uh, I don't know, maybe this was happening last week. It's, it's, it seems like it's been happening forever, like... At least a few days uh, where uh, Trump's been sending in these uh, federal troops and uh, just rounding people up with, like, you know, they don't got badges, no nothing. There's no way to, like, other than the fact they got lots of guns and, uh, you know, military clothing and all that stuff. They're like commando dudes uh, just rounding people up uh, seemingly randomly, but apparently, you know. We always used to joke about being on a list. Uh, well, I guess it's not so funny anymore because now people who are like on a list are getting rounded up and whatnot. Uh, I don't even know if there's been anybody reporting on what's actually happening to these people. I guess they're probably just being taken to jail, but I don't know for sure. Uh, yeah, it's real scary. It's real fucked up. And uh, I'm sorry that this is happening to uh, people I care about probably. Or at least people I care about are definitely uh, in danger of this happening to them. Because as far as I can tell, uh, wherever they, they're getting these uh, these names from is just like people who identify with Antifa or like Black Lives Matter protesters and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, I don't know what the uh, uh, qualifying, you know, things to be on their list of people that they need to go fucking round up is. Or maybe they're just doing it to people who are actively protesting. Either way, it's real fucked up. All right. You know, this is like, (laughs) you know, I'm over here in Germany and everybody's like, yeah, this is basically how Hitler got started uh, with his Gestapo and everything. And I know we like to joke about like cops being a Gestapo anyway, but this is like the real deal right now. Uh, So, yeah, it's uh, fucking uh, history uh, and everything like that is real fucked up. So anyway, uh, (laughs) There's other fucked up things going on that we got to get into in the world of punk rock. Uh, you got Burger Records and Michael Graves. Now, uh, separate issues, uh, but both real fucked up. I guess uh, with Burger Records, I don't know. Uh, there's like a, 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 well, they got a lot of bands that they put stuff out for over the years. Um, and uh, definitely some of them were real fucking cool. Uh, and I'm sure they'll go on to like find another label to put stuff out on. Uh, but a bit, apparently there was some shit going on where Burger Records was like creating a sort of a, like, uh, what do they call that? A culture of uh, sexual harassment and uh, misconduct and whatnot. Um, so that shit ain't cool. Uh, a lot of bands got uh, are getting like uh, called out for it that are on the label. But then apparently like the, the actual label had something to do with it. Uh, I don't know. This is kind of new. Uh, and I don't know. I haven't seen like the actual conversations that are going on. But I know that, like, a few of the bands that I'm stoked on, like Shannon and the Clams and stuff, have come out and said, uh, yeah, you know, we didn't, uh, you know, the label always supported us, but of course we're here for the support of survivors and whatnot, and that's important. So I'm glad they see that, their, uh, you know, being on the right side of these things. And, uh, yeah, it's real fucked up. Uh, apparently the, the, the label is just no more, um, which... You know, that's probably the right thing to do under these circumstances. Uh, Like I said, I think uh, bands like Shannon and the Clams and like some other bands, I don't I I don't have their roster in front of me. I got that list in front of me, Jim. All right. Uh, Yeah, uh, they don't you know, they'll find the good bands will find other labels to go to. I'm sure Um, I know a few (laughs) that we've dealt with would be great fits for them. Um, But yeah, uh, lots of fucked up shit going on there. Uh, and the, the shutting down the label. Uh, the only thing for me, I guess, is like I hope the bands don't struggle too much getting uh like any uh inventory or merch that the label might have had control over. Um, I know they said that they don't uh buy the rights to any of the band's music, so that's cool that they get to retain all that stuff. Um, it's important sometimes. And uh, yeah. Uh, the <laughs> the other thing I do want to say about Burger Records is they were mainly known for putting out cassettes. And I fucking hate cassettes. I know. We got cassettes out there. People buy them. They want to fucking have the like, uh, I don't know. What do you call that? It's like the novelty. That's what it is. And uh, I get that. 
but also cassettes are the worst fucking way to listen to music. They sound like shit from the beginning, and then after you listen to them for a while, they sound even worse. Uh, you know, records are better for uh, novelty anyway, because you get nice big artwork with them. Uh, they're cool, and uh, you know, even though the sound degrades over time from p putting the needle through those, uh, what do you call them, treads? No, that's not right. You know what I mean? Grooves, that's what they call it. All right. I don't want to get too groovy on you and act like some fucking hippie or something, but you know, that's the way it is. And uh, so you get uh, records, and they're better than cassettes. That's the point I'm trying to make. And Burger Records was way more known for their cassettes, which I feel like is a crime against music anyway. So, uh, yeah, good thing they're getting shut down. <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, moving on to the Michael Graves news. Uh, yeah, apparently he's a fucking proud boy, white supremacist piece of shit. I don't know if this was like a well-known thing for a while uh, because like I see this picture of him that's been blowing up. I think, I don't know. I think he posted it himself where he's given like the white power symbol uh, at a show. So, you know, that's real fucked up. But he, he straight up says, you know, like, uh, he's, he's I don't know, he's part of the white race who created the country and everything. Also, I've, I was doing some research, like I, I, I try to do uh, when I'm going to talk about this stuff. I never plan on being a fucking, uh, what do you call that, uh, someone who reports on stuff. Uh, not a televangelist or a reporter, but a journalist. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, but you know, like, uh, these times when everything's getting real fucked up, uh, we kind of got to, and I'm always happy to, like, kind of bring out, uh, stuff that relates to punk rock to you guys, so, uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I had to do some digging, and, uh, well, I didn't do no much digging, but, you know, it's pretty easy to fucking find, uh, stuff on anybody and anything that kind of matters at all these days. And I didn't realize that he was only in the Misfits for like five years back in the 90s. Like he hasn't been in the Misfits for fucking 20 years. Uh, so, but he's, he's done some other bands that, you know, he's probably only, probably only got famous because he was in the Misfits. Uh, I think pretty much everybody agrees that he was kind of like lame from the get go. Uh, they were just happy that the fucking Misfits were actually doing something, even with the, if it was out dancing. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. People like to talk shit about the Misfits anyway because they're kind of like maybe kind of douchebags. But I don't think, I hope that um, the rest of the band doesn't go that far where they're actually like fucking, uh, you know, Proud Boys and fucking pieces of shit like that. So anyway, I guess Michael Graves is canceled. That's the kind of the point. And that's cool because fuck that guy. Uh, anyway, uh, with, on this episode of the podcast... Uh, first of all, we got to give a shout out to the producers of the show. We got Luke Ellis, Hedda Royston, Gem City Sabrina, Vaughn Cotton, Sarah Koenig, Chelsea McNally, Cardboard Box Colony, and Carlos Hernandez. If you want to become a producer of the show, get on patreon.com slash intrudergreen. And, you know, you can throw me a buck a month or uh, like $100 million a month. Uh, if you're Jeff Bezos making, uh, I think somebody said... Over the weekend, he made like, uh, I don't know, what was it, like 200 million, 200 billion? Oh, yeah, two, he's in the billions. He makes billions every day. And that's real fucked up because that's part of the reason we're in the problem, having the problems we are these days. <laughs> anyway, not to keep going with that fucking sad, angry, making bullshit, uh, but, you know, uh, I, another thing I wanted to say is uh, I'm getting this podcast out real late. I try to release on Thursdays and it's already, we're well into Thursday. I try to do these intro things like ahead of time so I can make it happen on time. But you know, uh, got to do stuff for money and, uh, the podcast isn't always that. So, uh, if you want to make it easier for me, I would appreciate it. And the best way to do that is to get on a Patreon and, uh, give me a buck or two a month. All right. Uh, but yeah, I appreciate everybody who does do that, and, uh, you guys are fucking great. Uh, on this episode, uh, we got the guys from Western Addiction, uh, Jason and Chad from Western Addiction, uh, yeah, they were both in different places. We knew Chad from when he was working at, uh, Fat Records, so that was real cool to catch up with him a little bit more, and, uh, you'll, you'll see, you'll hear all about the goofiness of that. Uh, so anyway, without further ado, I want to show. Hello, this is a prepaid collect call from... Intruder Green. An inmate at the Neural Correctional Institution. This call is subject to recording and monitoring. To accept charges, press 1. Go, I'm a 
Ladies and gentlemen, Jason and Chad from Western Addiction. How you guys doing? How how you holding up there in uh, beautiful San Francisco? Uh, I, I'm doing all right. Where I'm? Are you guys both in San Francisco? In, actually, Chad's on the road. Oh shit! Yeah, Chad. I'm actually uh, I'm actually up in the uh, the North Woods of Wisconsin right now. Holy shit! I've I've been there before. That's a nice place to be. It is a nice place to be. Yeah, my uh, my dad retired up here. So. Oh damn, that's a good choice. Uh, I yeah. mean, shit. I wish I, <laughs> it probably doesn't make for great conversation for a podcast, but I would love to know like any like specifics about wherever he is. Um, but that's cool. Uh, you get up to uh, Big Bear Lodge. Let me know. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But no, that's that's a, that's real cool. Uh, you know, fuck you threw threw me for a loop there. Uh, that's cool though. You're right on the road, just visiting pops and uh, hiding out in the woods somewhere. I assume. I'm doing some yep. uh that's 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 the deal no no way i'm getting on a, but uh i did a little little road trip out here and made it out and get to spend some time uh away from the insanity yeah for sure and uh, things are very insane um i like uh i like hanging out in the woods too people are always like oh you're a punk rock dude you probably like uh hanging out in the city and doing like city stuff but i'm like no the woods are nice and peaceful and away from everybody if i'm not trying to get money i might as well hang out in the woods yeah you can't do crime in the woods though can you i mean not not the kind of crimes i like to do you could probably figure something out but nothing good you know like there's some weird stories about like appalachia and stuff but i'm not really into that kind of crime um yeah um, oh, okay. also like you know like crimes <laughs> okay. against the dnr like polluting and stuff that just sucks though I like to go out and like, <laughs> yeah. you know, maybe just like breathe the fresh air and whatnot. I mean, you know, it, that's that's what I'm saying. It's like you go in a city, you fucking pull off a crime. I mean, even Al Capone, like, I don't know if you guys know your history about like the Chicago crime scene and stuff, but like Al Capone used to hide out in Wisconsin uh, because they would do all their, their fucking crimes in Chicago and stuff. And then like to get away from the other gangs and the cops they would they had hideouts all over in wisconsin and they would hide out up there there's actually like a real famous one yeah. probably up where right by, by where chad is so uh you know it's like it's kind of like one of those secrets that you hope it's like wisconsin's best kept secret that you hope nobody ever knows about and uh <laughs> since nobody listens to this podcast nobody's still gonna know about it all right <laughs> you need work-life balance even if you're like a criminal you that's need to right get away from it that's right and you go hunting <laughs> and fishing and it's a good time are you doing any hunting up there chad are you just hanging out no hunting just um you know building stuff and helping out y yesterday i i chainsawed a, a tree that fell down and oh that's nice that sounds like hard work but then you got a bunch of firewood right yeah, and then you you reward yourself with some beers. That's right. I mean, I reward myself <laughs> with some beers, you know, even when I don't do it, nothing. But, you know, it's like uh, one of those participation prizes that the baby boomers hate so much. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, Jason, you're hanging out in San Francisco still. Uh, can you give me a report from the ground or the streets of San Francisco about what's going on there? Um, it's actually really quiet. And, uh, so you, it, it, it's the most quiet I've ever heard it. I had to go to the airport the other night and when you don't go out for a long time, you sort of forget how to drive. I forgot how to drive. So now I'm a crappy driver, crappier driver. Oh shit. Um, but it, it is amazingly quiet, but I just, I was just reading some, uh, some, some news about they're tearing down all these statues and I mean, they're going for everything, and there was supposed to be a statue of C Christopher Columbus pulled down. Um, in oh, that's the, right in the in the park today, but they did it. <laughs> they did it early, <laughs> um, and then they <laughs> they tore down one of Junipero Serra and somebody else too. So, um, I think the craziest thing about the statues coming down, we talked about this last night, is yeah. how easy they come down. Yeah, like, right. And they're super dangerous. Like you oh, see yeah. them fall, that could kill a person. Absolutely. But it's just like two two dudes with a rope and that's it. That's all you need. Wow. 
Yeah, I was reading. I mean, that's pretty funny that they did it early because they'd like being sneaky to get it done before, uh, you know, yeah. they can get stopped. Um, but yeah, it's it's amazing, uh, you know, how how easy it is that now that you say that, I saw like a little guide that somebody posted about like safety precautions and how you need like sixty people <laughs> on each side and stuff. But it's like no, just just yeah. just get in there with a few people, just pull it on down. <laughs> yeah also, you just wrap it around the head and it comes down it's crazy yeah i'm also it's it's, it's a surprising to me you know like i'm not no history buff or nothing i mean i'm not no kind of like uh knowledge buff by any means but uh <laughs> you know all the different uh names that are coming out that have had statues built of, of them that are problematic like i obviously i think people know about columbus for a long time now and uh but yeah the one the other one you said like i didn't even know that name but there's they're just popping out and it's like wow who knew yeah that one that one was surprising there's lots of things in san francisco that are named after juniper Serra. um but man it's have you ever read the people's history of the united states it it it's brutal and yeah. i know that a, a duh for some people but it's like I think you hear these stories and you're like, yeah, Columbus was bad. And, and I believe that too. But when you really read what he was doing, it is brutal. Yeah. Yeah. I believe it's it could gross. be true. I mean, I never actually read that book. Somebody sent it to me and, uh, you know, it's on the list, but, uh, I've heard a lot about, you know, that from people who also read it and, uh, you know, yeah, fucking brutal shit. And, uh, it's interesting yeah. now, uh, what everything is leading to. It's like, you know, over the years, uh, I was actually talking to a guy recently who was like, I think Trump's really good for America. And I was like, are you fucking crazy? And he's like, no, he's like, the, <laughs> he's like your Darth Vader. You know, it's like you need everybody needed like a real arch villain to like, uh, you know, rise against. And now that's what's happening. Because like, you know, think about like, uh, what, 2016? It was like, I don't know if that's when people started getting like woke and like the me too movement and all this stuff started happening <laughs> and now it's like full throttle to the max and uh you know yeah. fucking toppling statues fucking we're getting on the black lives matter thing and you know obviously there's different reasons for different sparks uh kind of like lighting the fire here but uh yeah i don't know <laughs> it could be like yeah. donald trump he's, he's like i'm gonna i'm gonna fix america and we're like well you know, <laughs> you're going to, like, be a catalyst for it, maybe. I don't know. The yeah, dumbest yeah. catalyst ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. But you're right. He could be the the the, the reason it all happened. Um, I don't know, man. Uh, I watched them, like, did you read the news story last week where they sent out this campaign update and they were using Nazi symbols? It's the upside down red triangle. And the news stations freak out and everybody, and it's, it's like these are engineered to make the world flip out. Yeah. The, the one way you pull power away from someone is just to not pay attention to them. Oh, for and sure. so sometimes I wish the news would be just like, we're not covering you, man. That would flip him out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but but you're right. This is, yeah, the catalyst for definitely the Antichrist. But the, <laughs> but the big... But the, yeah. There's still a bunch of... There's still to the idiots out there i was just reading a, a you know interview with a, with a bernie supporter in wisconsin who oh, yeah. said yeah i'm i'm probably not gonna vote i just don't think there's gonna be that much of a difference in <laughs> my life between yeah. trump and oh. biden because people oh, are fucking God. selfish and they're gonna ruin it for everybody yeah yeah i know what you mean and it's like yeah biden biden is far from my first choice you know as if i ha was able to vote but uh you know, fucking, he's a hell of a lot better than uh, what we got now. So, <laughs> uh, but the, the those statues are going far too. Like the if you read about the story in Portland, they're now pulling down statues of Washington. Um, and if you read about Washington, he did a bunch of bad stuff. And oh it's yeah, like, it's going all the way. I thought it would just be the Columbus statues yeah. and be done with there, but no, it's it's going to the top. You know. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, you know, I mean, there might be a little gray area where you're like, oh, well, I don't know about that one, but I guess we're on a roll here. So, uh, you know, like, take them down. Fucking people are passionate right now. and We can figure it out later. You know, it's like that whole, uh, 
what do they say, killing them all and letting guys sort them out? Well, you know, like, tear them all down, <laughs> fuck them. If they're worth rebuilding, we'll do it later. I don't know. <laughs> Since Trump commits so many crimes, are you and your boys, like, is part of you just like, man, hats off. That's that's right. It's, it's a weird <laughs> feeling because, uh, you know, it's like, I like, you know, we're punk rockers and inherently, I don't know, I mean, there's like, you know, far right wing punk rockers who like they can, you know, take a hike as far as I'm concerned because they're fucking weird. But, uh, you know, we're pretty like <laughs> liberal dudes. Um, but, you know, when it comes to crime, we're kind of like, shit, maybe we should be voting Republican because they fucking <laughs> like. But, but no, it's a double edged sword there because they're also like all about the cops and fucking, you know, cracking True. down on, on, on the good crimes. Like, they're all about hurtful crimes. Uh, like white collar yeah. crimes. I don't even know how to do that stuff. You got to be like a computer <laughs> hacker or something and hack into Wall Street <laughs> and be like, oh, look at all this money I got for free and I don't got to pay taxes on it because uh, I paid the lawyers to do stuff. Uh, that's that's more like fucking mafia shit, which I would love to be in the mafia, but I would not like the process of getting into the mafia, you know? It's like a weird thing. <laughs> I would like to rip the benefits, but not do the hard work. Which is ultimately Fair. why you choose crime in the first place. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, there's like, uh, ultimately, you know, th th there's, it's actually kind of a uh, bipartisan issue, I think. It's just that they, they take it on in different ways. Like, ultimately, I think we're headed for legalizing crime. And that's a, it, that's, uh, a, a catchphrase or what you want to call it, a hashtag that we've been, uh, touting for a while now where uh you know it's like uh you know you legalize weed and that's a good idea um and probably some other drugs maybe too and uh you know <laughs> legalize all sorts of shit and then you don't gotta worry about it it's no longer a crime and then uh we could kill we, we could kill we can i got a freudian slip there we could keep doing what we want to do and get away with it and it's no problem I guess it depends on where you yeah. draw the line, though. Um, yeah, they're taking away your crimes. That's right. They're legitimizing us, which is a weird yes. feeling. It's it's weird. I don't know how to feel about it, but if it keeps me out of prison, you know, that's good. Yeah, it shows you were right all along. <laughs> that's right. You can, <laughs> <laughs> what do they call that? Oh, there's a word for that. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, you know, it's like in the age of Corona and everything, obviously you guys know this, there's no fucking tours going on. Um, 2020 is basically canceled as far as live music events, as far as I can tell. I mean, there might be some shit getting planned yeah. still. Um, you know, I don't want to like say something and have you guys be like, actually, we got a bunch of shows lined up that ain't been canceled yet. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of a mess. And, uh, you know, it, it's hard to not revert back to doing crimes because, you know, you got to make money somehow. Um, and, uh, you know, it, with the, with the chaos yeah. that's going on, you got looters and everything, but I wanted to mention that too. Like, uh, I know there's, there's, uh, there's some, some different kind of messages about, uh, the looters and everything. Um, some, uh, more passionate and knowledgeable about like why that's happening. And obviously there's some people like just taking advantage uh of the situation to like get some free shit or they just want to make the movement look bad but uh i would say those guys uh, are wimps you gotta fucking if you're gonna fucking pull some crimes do it when it's not easy all right come on it's like you don't you don't want to do the work to have a real job so so do the crimes but do it when it's hard because otherwise you're just being a wimp yeah, yeah. show crime some respect yeah. that's right Windows are already broken. The cops are not there. There's That's no right. bravery. Or the, or the cops are helping them because they're like, yeah, this makes yeah. the movement look bad and keeps us on top. All right. So anyway, um, yeah, <laughs> we can get into some actual band talk if you guys want to. Um, you yeah. guys, let's see. You guys just put out a single I saw. I listened to it, too. Uh, I didn't just see it. I actually listened to the song. Um, what? <laughs> It was this year. I, I, didn't, I didn't see what month, how long ago it was. Uh, our new record came out on uh, May 15th. All right. And uh, yeah, we just released, we released um, a video for this song called They Burned Our Paintings. You may have saw that video. And then yeah. 
we just made another video too um for the title track um the record's called frail bray um and that's going to come out soon but yeah all our shows are are canceled um we had we were going to play with propaganda we're going to play with bad religion oh we're going to go on the european summer festival tour that is postponed until next year so we've kind of just been doing all the boring parts of being in a band yeah. um all the paperwork which is so lame to talk about but there's so much work to do but we're doing awesome interviews like this one and yeah. um so yeah so we're just like hanging out and uh promoting the record it feels funny to promote it during a pandemic though it makes me feel a little guilty um because the world's like having so many problems but i mean we're proud of it so we do want people to at least like check it out oh yeah they like, should, what do you think um yeah so that's so yeah it, it's <laughs> i don't know it's if you heard that I, sorry it cut out for a sec i mean so, uh, we we of course this is the worst time in the world to release a record some other bands got hosed a little harder than us though i mean the bomb pops and pairs they had records came out a few months before us on on the same label oh yeah bad cop bad cop too yeah i feel bad for them like they tour hard and yeah they're re- i mean you, your record's just forgotten and and so I don't know if you like make a new record before the next year or what you do. We have some leftover songs and we're going to put them out somehow um, to kind of reboost what's going on. Um, Cause we don't make records that often, but mm-hmm. I don't know. I've been writing riffs. So yeah, keep it going. You know, that's the thing. Uh, it's uh it's part of why I've been doing more social on the, the more stuff on the social medias and everything. It's like, you got to do something right. Like, uh, and, and, and I know a lot of bands have been doing, like, live streams and stuff. Uh, we've been getting hit up a little bit to do some, like, live stream concerts, which is kind of hard to do when everybody is, like, I wouldn't say detained, but, like, kind of hunkered down and, like, in their <laughs> own places. It's like, I could hook up, like, a fucking webcam and, like, play guitar over it and everything. But, you know, I don't know if, if, if Red knows how to do that, <laughs> you know? So it's like <laughs> getting, getting everybody on the same page as far as the technology goes could be a, a disconcerting. I think that's a word. Yeah. Um, so, uh, like, uh, trying to figure it out is difficult. I don't know. You guys had any chance to do anything like yeah. that or, like, any interest in it? I don't know, man. It's uh, uh, not watched one of those things. Uh, <laughs> yeah. They- it's, it's not the same thing and I, it's not even close to the same thing there's no no sense of community or camaraderie there right uh and we can't even i suppose i would be only if us as a band could at least be in the same room together yeah. doing it like from one each person from their own home that just looks stupid unless you're the stones and you're charlie watts playing air drums <laughs> that was incredible oh did they do that with the drum beat underneath it's so late yes oh, i saw wow. that it was so good wait was he actually <laughs> playing air drums or was he trying to look like he was playing drums and it wasn't real no little... he was he was playing air drums along with the other guys in the stones each from their own houses <laughs> nice but the drums are underneath it, so it's like not even pretending. Like I can't be bothered to even get yeah. something. Yeah, they're that's good. just cases. They're they're they're, they're just like <laughs> drum cases or suitcases or whatever. It's amazing. <laughs> that sounds yeah. great. Uh, that's that's nice. Um, yeah, and I know what you mean though about like you know you don't get the spirit. It's when people do it now. I feel like it's like sheer entertainment. You know, like you're just doing it to kind of like stay there and have people like not forget about you i guess um but you know i yeah. guess there's, there's other things to do too like uh uh you know my buddy sam russo over here he's in england and he does this like saturday morning coffee it's like every morning he just fucks around on it on a interwebs and does a live stream where he, he just talks about like ninja turtles and some of his favorite tunes and it's kind of <laughs> weird because it's like you know it's it's like guys like me and him and even and you guys too like if you did decide to do it kind of just being like hey i got like a thousand followers on instagram uh let's hang out also i'm in a band don't forget about that and then uh you know i don't it, it's it's kind of a way to keep things uh interesting but yeah taking it to the point where you're playing music online is kind of like i don't know it, people seem to like it 
I'm not that stoked on it personally, like for all the reasons we just mentioned. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It could be a thing. I mean, if you're in a band, though, do it just for me. Uh, Yeah, just so our band can actually play rock music together, because that's the biggest thing that I miss about all this. Yeah, get to get in a room and play. If we got to do that, the distance from you, someone have to be way in the front, spitting out. Uh, away from us but if we got to do that <laughs> yeah. and someone wanted to watch sure why not <laughs> yeah right um i've also heard uh that there's uh this call for like shows getting booked now at like drive-in movie theaters i don't know if you heard about that <laughs> uh i think I heard. we might have got asked to do one and i don't know if it's happening for sure or not so i don't want to like you know, say whether or not it's happening. But, uh, yeah, I don't even know if they got, like, drive-in movie theaters in San Francisco. I know there's a few in Wisconsin. Um, but, yeah, I don't know if that's, like, a thing where everybody just sits in their cars and watches the band play, which kind of sounds lame. Like, I think it works great for movies, <laughs> but, you know, when you fucking see the band play, you want to be up there and, like, bumping into people and stuff, which, obviously, we can't have right now, but... <laughs> I don't know. I guess the idea is it's an it's a big enough space, but it's not like you know too big, like fucking Alpine Valley or Red Rocks or some shit, where you gotta like pay a million dollars to just to rent the place or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't know about those those movie theater things. I saw a couple bands to like try to do those socially distant shows. It's just so weird. Yeah, that's the that's the only reason you do go to a show. It's like you feel the energy in the room. It's it's like a it, it's a feel and it's a smell and it's all those things. If you don't, just watch it on the internet. Because why the hell would you sit in your car and just like look at someone about you know a hundred <laughs> yards away rocking out? It's so goofy. Like, did you see the um, the Dropkick Murphys play with uh, Bruce Springsteen in um, what, what's, what's what's Boston's Park, Chad? Wrigley Field. Oh, wait. No. That's Chicago. Uh, Fenway. Fenway. Fenway, sorry. That's the one. Um, it, it was, I mean, it was fine that they did it. I don't think it was exactly live, but it was just so weird. And then Bruce Springsteen comes on that, the the Jumbotron, and I love Bruce Springsteen. But it's just there's just something so awkward about the whole deal. So just wait. Yeah. yeah. I think that's the, probably the best thing is just wait. Um, I would be interested, though... If, if if somebody tried to do one of these shows with, uh, you ever seen, I'm not even sure what the sport is called, but it's like people wear those big bubbles and they like knock into each other. And I think they try to play soccer that way or something. <laughs> that like could be kind of interesting. Or, like I don't a Ninja know. Challenge or something, Oh right? yeah, yeah. Like, uh, yeah. What is that show? Yeah. I don't know if it's Ninja, or like Wipeout. That's the one. Um, I think they did some shit like that where they're wearing like a big bubble around them. And, uh, I don't know that I would be interested to see just because I like to see people running into each other with those big balls on. But, uh, you know, <laughs> that's the only reason people watch those shows is just somebody just get their ass kicked by a boulder. Oh yeah. Something. And getting scorpioned out where their fucking legs get flipped behind their back and they like looking at their feet. It's like, Oh shit. And then, and then they're in the yeah. water, and they're like, oh, I got to swim back now. I'm totally humiliated and in pain. All right. <laughs> swim, swim back. <laughs> like so much America. All right. Yeah. Thanks for listening to the Intruder Green Podcast. By now, you probably heard about our sponsor, Stupid Rad Merch Company. And if you haven't, then listen up, because I got to tell you, Stupid Rad Merch Company is a great web store with a bunch of your favorite bands at stupidradmerch.com. And if you're in a band and need some work done, they can get you totally covered for a modest price and super quick turnaround time. But don't just take it from me. Here's what the ladies from Bad Cop, Bad Cop had to say about it. Yeah, you know. Great ideas. It's always pushing, always moving. Simeon is delightful to work with. He's yeah. very responsive and professional. and It's the quality of the shirts. I like them. Yeah, high quality. High very, quality. Very well done. Very well done on the ink. It, it really feels does. like a family again. Yeah. It feels like it's, it's a place where you can... You can Trust what's happening. And don't forget to use the code PRISON at checkout and get a 15% discount on all Stupid Red branded apparel. That's P-R-I-S-O-N, I think. I don't really know how to spell, but those are the letters they told me to say. StupidRedMerch.com StupidRedMerch.com 
guitar players. I bet you thought you were shit out of luck when it comes to finding your dream guitar amp. You know, you go on some auction site or something and it's all crap. <laughs> yeah, well that's because, you know, you gotta look in the right place. And the right place is Yeah Man's Vintage and Used Guitars. They got exactly what you're looking for. Now I know what you're thinking. Aren't they located in like Switzerland or something? Yeah man, they are. Burn Switzerland to be exact. But you know, you can uh, get on the internet and you can go check out the website, yeahmansguitars.com, and uh, you can order stuff on there. So, uh, you know, it don't really matter where the heck you are in the world. You can just get on their website and uh, find all sorts of cool stuff that you're looking for. And you might not even know that you wanted it until you see it on there. And there's a lot of good stuff. Uh, if you got something specific you're looking for and need some help finding it, just hit up Yeah Man Guitars on the electronic mail. That's the email. It's like 21st century and you got email and websites. It's like amazing. Some people would call it magic. Some people would call it science. I just call it, I don't know, crazy shit. Uh, yeah Man's Guitars at gmail.com. As far as email goes, it's where you email them. And while you're at it, get your band a tour in Europe and stop out of shop. Michael and the rest of the crew would love to meet you, I'm sure, and you could tell them Green sent you. Yeah, man's vintage and used guitars. So, touring is canceled. Uh, new album is, uh, you know, it's there. <laughs> and uh, it's out on Fat, right? I, I know you said it's the same album, uh, same label as those other bands. <laughs> yeah, it's out on fat. Okay. The one of the one of the cool things is I don't think we've ever got a reception for a record like this yet. Oh, that's um, is that good or bad? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's good, a good reception. I think. I, I don't know. It's it's. I'm kind of like flattered a little bit. I never I never know what to expect. You know, I don't know if this. I don't ever know if the songs are good, but there's just like a lot of interest. Yeah. Um, and the video we put out, it's been seen by like 40,000 people, which I might not be big for some bands or whatever, but that's a lot of not just, for me. Yeah. It's just like the continue. Every time I open my phone, there's like nine plus messages, for like somebody either looking at the video, sharing the video. So that part has been kind of flattering. Um, it's, it's like a little bit of a shame we can't go out and play, but the, but the reception has made it feel okay. I don't know. What do you think, Chad? Time this, uh, my, uh-oh, Chad's breaking up. You're, you're I think you're too stuff, far so out in the you woods just, there. You just <laughs> oh, that sounds great. <laughs> Chad, sorry, to, you're breaking up a little, Chad. What did you say? All right. Uh, any better? Yeah, that's Are a you out in the woods? Hello? Hello? Hey. Hello. Go for it. Now you're there. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I know what you can do about it, so you may as well just roll with it. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's ultimately the lesson uh, that we're, we're learning in... Uh, these corona days whatever um but you know eh, you know maybe <laughs> i don't even know when this shit's gonna be over nobody seems to i keep hearing shit like oh probably like fall next year and i'm like oh okay shit time to find a new line of work or something um oh by the way chad i wanted to say i think uh you emailed the band a while back when uh you were leaving fat records and not that the band left, but you, you, you stopped working there at some point, right? Yeah. And uh, you emailed us, and it was a really nice email uh, talking about how, like, we're your favorite band, and you love <laughs> us so much and everything. Um, I mean, I don't have a great memory, so it might not, not have been, like, word for word like that. But uh, I'm pretty sure we never responded because it was one of those things where it was like, oh, that's a nice email. I'm sure Blue will <laughs> respond to it. And he was probably thinking, oh, Green likes to respond to emails like this. I'm sure he'll get to it. And uh, I'm pretty sure we never responded. So uh, sorry about that. But uh, yeah, it was nice to hear from you. <laughs> and uh, it's nice to talk to you again. You guys big time, yeah. Chad. That's <laughs> I guess not cool. so. We did not mean to, but uh, I guess that's probably what happened. Yeah. It, nice to hear three years later. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, uh, the internet is a fickle thing, I guess. I don't know what that means, but probably. <laughs> yeah. So if there's no more, uh, you know, of this talking about music business that doesn't exist anymore, I'm wondering if you guys got some crime stories for me. Uh, I, I sadly have very few crime stories. <laughs> it kind of made me 
like, oh man, I can't participate. I, I, I mean, only when I was younger. I mean, oh yeah, that's but good. like they're they're lame ones, like drinking underage. Like that's that's like a giant yawn. But I, I, Chad, do we have any crime stories? Have yeah, we done any uh, it doesn't have band? to be specifically about the band either. It's just crime uh, stories. They're fun. Well, there, there's no crime in this band. This is a very uh, straight laced band. Yeah, we Wait. we have our fun on tour and stuff. Mormons and shit. There's no crimes. That's right. We've gotten a little more Motley Crue though, Chad. Right? Like, <laughs> on, I, I'm I. <laughs> he's right that we are pretty like we we play music because we like music and it's it's like the of the three things you can do in rock and roll we just do the rock and roll um, oh, yeah. <laughs> um but lately and i welcome this um we've had some interesting motley crewish moments and i and i'm fully uh i applaud those but <laughs> It's kind of funny. It's like well, novel, actually. Usually you're like wanting this person or that person to not do that. But we're like, yes, you should drink and maybe miss the, you know, the bus and, oh, and yeah. we'll get you somehow. Like, I, I'm proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that happens. Um, but nobody's like, uh, right. you know, ODing and seeing themselves fly out of hospital trucks, right? I think the Tommy Lee had a story about that. <laughs> um, no. No. We, you you can tell some crime stories. We've had some. Um, an old bass player actually sent some inappropriate texts that he meant for his um, gal to Ken once. And <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it, he's it the was, best person to have received those in the band just for the comedic value. I don't know. Like a, it was like a romantic like thing, and and he accidentally sent it to Ken, and Ken just held up his phone. He's like, "What the hell is this?" I'm like, "Well, I think he likes you." <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I think <laughs> every every band crime. member should Chad, do that, right? Crime? Yeah. Hey, uh, hey, uh, Green, you know, yeah. uh, uh, dudes from the Leg Hounds, is that correct? Probably. Um, you know, they're from uh, Shaboy. I don't know. I I feel like that sounds familiar, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. When uh, one of my old band with the Leg Hounds, we were called the Radio Reelers, and uh, we were. I was reminded of this by our, our talk of statues coming down yeah. earlier and how, you know, in the in the American South, the uh, uh, statues are still up to the losers oh, of yeah. the war. The losers still had their stat. You know? yeah. uh, and we, the ultimate we, participation in, uh, trophies. We were, we were in uh, we were on tour and we were in uh, eastern Germany yeah. and and we we're in some town, some small town, some small and there's a giant statue of Lenin in the middle of the town still. Uh, and this was, you know, 15 years after, after the wall came down and, and, and Germany was reunited. Still a big statue of Lenin in the middle of the town. Yeah. And it was, I don't know, after we, after we played, I had a few beverages. And uh, uh, there was a, you know, a loose, a loose stone at the base of the statue. And I decided that that was mine. And, uh, I liberated it and took it on the rest of the tour and uh, used it for a, a, a block in front of the bass drum, which, you know, oh, as damn. they tend to do, move away from you as you play. So, yeah, the, uh, and we, 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 we nicknamed it the commie block. And <laughs> nice. That's where it was from. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, I got to tell you, I'm actually in East Germany as we speak. And, uh, yeah, you know, like they're real interested in keeping their, uh, uh, not their heritage. It's not about heritage here. It's more about like learning from your past. Although that one surprises me that they would have a, a statue of Lenin up. Usually it's more like we're not going to get rid of this uh, uh, concentration camp because we're going to turn it into a museum so people can come here and learn about how terrible shit can get. Um, so yeah, the, the, the Lenin statue is a little uh, odd one. So, uh, but anyway, yeah. props to you for. Uh, you know, that definitely counts as a crime. I'm sure if the police saw you do that, they would be like, no, 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 da, das is nicht gut. And, uh, no. yeah, that's the way uh, Germans talk. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's a cool thing. Do you still got it? I suppose you probably couldn't get it on the plane. Uh, at, at the end of the piece to everybody, I've, so I've got a piece somewhere. Oh, all right. You br break it up then? Sounds like it was yeah. a pretty big fucking rock if it was held in your kick yeah. drum back. <laughs> 
It was, yeah, it was like, uh, like two feet square and it was really fucking heavy. Nice. <laughs> that's a, that's a big piece of a statue to take. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah, good. You know, you don't remember what city it was in or you do and you just don't want to say. No, I, I honestly do not. That, that tour was five weeks and it was a show. It, it was a blur yeah. as I'm, I'm sure you're aware how these things go. Oh yeah. Uh, the first, you know, the first like, uh, two times, I think we came to Europe, you know, uh, I don't know. I don't know if you guys are, I, I, do you guys go through destiny for booking over here or, over in Europe or did you before? I don't know. We, we don't do it enough to, to have a booking agent. We just sort of arrange it ourselves. Oh, well, that's cool. Um, I think that would be very difficult and I don't even want to try to think of, imagine like the, the, the <laughs> process for that. But, uh, uh yeah so anyway like destiny likes to book us in a lot of german places um which is kind of weird because it's like oh yeah we're a comedy band let's go play a bunch of shows in germany where they really like comedy <laughs> um but anyway uh yeah we were uh the first t- couple of times we played over here we played a bunch of shows all over germany and i was like oh germany is really pretty and people were like really and i was like yeah you know uh it's got it kind of looks like wisconsin and then i came over here and i'm like actually it kind of looks like illinois it's real flat and uh there's not a whole lot of water i'm like oh yeah because there's different (laughs) parts of germany and some of them are like beautiful with rolling hills and mountains and stuff and then there's like the east (laughs) where it's uh lots of uh you know industrial buildings and whatnot Oh yeah, and, and uh, all those uh, abandoned buildings where you know it used to be housing. Yeah, or like factories that crumbled when the wall came down. Yeah, and yeah, or maybe they were crumbling before that. You know, there was a lot of unrest for for lots of different reasons. And like I said before, I don't know shit about history, so I'm not gonna go too far into it. But uh, you know, they're doing pretty good over here. I think um, people are pretty stoked on uh, you know that freedom they got in the '90s. Or whatever and uh yeah they're having a good time yeah they're doing well we love playing there we we played a bunch of shows there it was great yeah well oh that reminds me of another thing i was gonna say um just one last little tidbit about the band uh you guys do pretty aggressive music i don't know you guys uh you're definitely one of the more aggressive sounding bands on fat um and, uh, you know, I think uh, maybe part of the reason you guys are getting a little extra push with the with the new album and everything is because that's, that's what people want right now, you know? Like, people are fucking charged up. They want to listen to some music that charges them up even more. And, uh, you know, it's helpful, I think. It's like, it's weird how, pe- how, how that shit works where people are like, sometimes when you're bummed out, you want to listen to music that also sounds like the singer is bummed out. And it makes you maybe even more bummed out, but it's like, I don't know, it's a weird kind of therapeutic thing. So now, like, people are getting all pissed off about shit that they should be pissed off about. And they're like, I want to listen to some fucking pissed off music. And it's like, yeah, <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, we we are the the odd band out. It, it's, it's kind of funny. Um, there's been a, actually a couple of responses to the video where people are like, I, I wouldn't expect this or somebody else. Another interviewer asked me, you don't have the strain of Southern California punk within your band. And I thought about that <laughs> and I'm like, we don't, we don't have that. It's, it's, but we, but we're on a label and we, you know, get shows with bands that do have that strain, but we mm. don't have it. Um, so we're in this nether world. And we want to play, but we want to play. We want to play with everyone. And I, w- our goal is for some of the heavier bands to act. If they would just listen, they'd go, oh, oh, okay, you can come with us. But no, but getting people to to listen and and uh, get over the fact that you know we're we're on a pop punk label, that's hard. That yeah. that's a constant hurdle. Yeah, it is like that. And, you know, it's 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 weird because, you know, the branding of being on Fat Records, I, I feel like that's helpful for most bands on the label because, you know, that that's that's such a big name. Um, but it definitely has a certain kind of like uh, 
quality to it that people don't necessarily think like i remember when uh uh a veil got on fat and like back in the day i think i don't know if they re-released some of their stuff from lookout but it was like really weird because it was like this is a band that sounds weird for lookout records and they also sound even more weird for like being on fat records and now that's happening and it's just like but yeah but it's just a label it's like it's just you know fucking Mike or Aaron thinks this band is good and they want to put it out and uh, you know like obviously they're based in fucking California so a lot of that shit's gonna happen but like fucking hey fucking Dylan Jafar is on fat there's all sorts of like different shit on there it's just uh, people don't necessarily uh, I don't know see it yeah, yeah. The, the sick the, of it all I mean sick yeah, of it that's all right. was on fat and they yeah, are, I think like, they put out their true, best true album on New York fat. hardcore that's yeah. right yeah I love that shit um yeah, <laughs> all right um well do you guys got any more crime stories i know chad said he had a few but i don't know if uh <laughs> if you want to well, get into them i've never incriminated anybody well, on a podcast but i'm i'm ready to give you one or two more uh well you know like we were talking about earlier about about the cops and legalizing marijuana yes yeah, and that what is unbelievable to me is that it's still it's still illegal to to drink a beer in an alley Oh I, yeah, don't you think? Absolutely, I that's mean, dude. So like, my whole thing is like, uh, you know, like we went on tour in Europe a few times, and you could drink wherever the fuck you want over here. Um, yeah. And then when I would come back to the states, I'd be like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna do some uh, what do you call that? Civil disobedience." I just walk around a <laughs> residential neighborhood with a beer. I mean, it wasn't a real big deal because there were no cops around. Because if there were, I would probably run anyway. But you know, I get, I hear what you're saying sure has happened to anybody who's gone to punk shows when you're when they're young and poor and you're like well i can't afford the beer inside so i'm gonna go outside in the alley and have a, and get uh get fired up and then go back into the show and then before you know it there's there's cops there telling you uh oh you're in trouble yeah. and uh yeah, trying to trying to arrest you or what what not and all you got to do is say nope i don't have my id on me sorry officer and uh well, that works sometimes. Oh, really? That's nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's good to know. I feel like yeah. if I tried to say that to a cop, they would try to be like, well, then you're coming to jail, bud. Yeah. But that's nice that it works. Yeah. It, it, We're going to do can. some more crimes so, and then come back on the show. <laughs> it's going to be crazy. Yeah, that's good. Uh, I, if I can't incriminate nobody for past crimes, I can at least uh, like instigate new crimes right yes yeah. i gotta well, use this say, platform Chad? for something destructive <laughs> I, can, I can i can give you one more little little tidbit back in college you know uh i was at a a, a radio station and i had a show on a radio station like a lot of us did yeah and uh you know you're in that that room with with all the sometimes you're like man i wish i had some of this at my house and uh and you make it happen oh, one yeah. or another uh I know, I know the right, feeling. A few, re few records here and there. Yeah, that's right. You can even, yeah. you can even do that if you don't work at the record state at, at the radio station. Yeah. <laughs> you, it it's probably easier if you uh, do. That's that's the thing. It's it's an inside job. That's, that, that's right. what makes it so nice. Yeah. I mean, I'm more accustomed to outside jobs, but inside jobs sounds pretty good. Sounds pretty cush. Yeah. <laughs> sounds like a cush job, you know. That, that was uh that was almost almost 20 years ago and i, I still use that uh stereo to this day hell yeah Whoa. i'm sure it was fucking hi-fi shit <laughs> literally all or, right or the big score so th th this was back in you know 99 2000 the big score was a copy of bad religions into the unknown on vinyl oh, which hell was yeah fine back then i decided that it would be much better off at my house yeah absolutely whoa, whoa devious i didn't know this story <laughs> but not that bad it's not that great but it's not that bad <laughs> is that the one that's all uh like uh was that their weird album yeah it's, yeah it's yeah. like Journey. i don't know how to put it's it other got, than weird it's got synths and keyboards and yeah that's right it was like, uh, sort of, if you're a Bad Religion fan, back then at least it was the Holy Grail. Now, of course, you can find it anywhere. But, uh, yeah, it was it was like a, 
a wow moment looking through the collection and finding some of these records that are impossible to find and oh yeah because it was yeah. like it was like their et game like how atari did that et game and then they literally were like this game is so bad we just gotta re- try to erase it from history and they actually like bulldozed it in a landfill or something and then they found like, oh people yeah actually dug it up dug them up later yeah it's kind of like that yeah. an archaeologist yep. could have found those like the world's crappiest game <laughs> That's right. I mean, <laughs> that's pretty much what happened. I don't know if they were archaeologists or whatever, but yeah, exactly. Cool. Yeah. Well, we're right, we're winding down here, guys. I don't know if you guys want to uh, put yourselves out there as far as your social medias or whatnot, or if you got anything else you want to uh, bring up before we end this. But uh, now is a good time to do that. Um, well, you know what? E- everyone knows how to access bands on social media. I yeah. get. If you don't know how to do that, then then what do you do your life? So <laughs> I don't think we need to spell out what. I... Yeah, read out the W's, Chad. W W W. Wait, don't forget yeah. the H T T P P slash double colon <laughs> thing. Whatever. I don't know. I like that. I love when people do that. It's so funny. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're just hoping that. I mean, you don't have to like our songs, but we're just hoping you can give it check out our new record, Feral Bray. And when we come to our t- your town, come up and say hello. We like meeting people, and and uh, we're gonna have a new video out pretty soon um, for the title track for El Bray. Um, and I, it turned out pretty cool as well. So yeah, if you just give us a listen, we'd be grateful. Is there a specific place people should go to get the videos? Like, do you guys got a YouTube channel? Is it on a fat YouTube channel or something? Um, there's a fat YouTube channel. We have it on our Facebook page um it's or it, it's all it's all over youtube too it's pretty easy to find um it's on band, we, band camp too yeah oh that's good yeah, band. i'm glad you guys are utilizing Bandcamp. like i think that's a pretty fucking yeah. cool website uh that you know it's 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 great for like independent bands that aren't even on a label to fucking use it so like the fact that bands that do have a label still use it uh i think is a really nice way to kind of boost that platform yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, if you like I, black I, metal, it's too- yeah, it's the place to be. There's so many good black metal bands on there. Excellent. <laughs> uh, thanks so much, though. Appreciate chatting with you. We're gonna do some hardcore crimes, and then we're gonna talk. Excellent. Yeah, just let me know <laughs> when you when the, when you get those done, and we'll have you guys back on anytime. Yeah, I'm gonna punch a baby. <laughs> Maybe. But that sounds kind of bad. As long Maybe as not. as long as he deserves it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks so much. All right. Thanks, guys. We'll speak to you soon. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Talk to you later. Take care. And that's it for the Intruder Green Podcast. I want to thank Jason and Chad again for being on it. You can hit me up on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, all at Intruder Green. The Intruder Green call-in line is plus 1608-535-9608. Patreon.com slash Intruder Green if you want to become a producer of the show. The Intruder Green podcast is produced by Colin Bennett, hair and makeup by Genevieve Smith, set design by Dylan Rayma, catering Matthew Hendershot, lighting, squeak lights, Rahway, New Jersey. Our theme song is Particles by Pipe Bros. I think everyone could use a scotch. <laughs>